Is a good time in innovation land. Today we are going to be talking about lateral thinking methodology. We've been off on a bit of an adventure for the past few slideshows thinking about creative thinking processes and some of the different models that have been developed by um, different thought leaders in this space. And today we're going to be thinking about Edward de Bono again. We visited Edward de Bono in his thinking hats a couple of videos back. Now we're thinking about Edward de Bono's principles of lateral thinking, and he did a lot of work on thinking about creative thought processes, and we're going to apply some of them today. So at the end of this video, you will be able to apply Edward de Bono's principles of lateral thinking and reflect on a variety of lateral thinking methods. We'll use provocation statements or POE statements to generate lateral thinking, and we'll also use a different practitioner's application. We'll apply Doug Hall's Spark Deck concept as part of lateral thinking. So, oh, there's Edward de Bono, and here's his quote, creative thinking is not a talent, it is a skill that can be learned. It empowers people by adding strength to their natural abilities, which improves teamwork and productivity and, where appropriate, profits. And so, those of you who are following along this course as part of Niagara College's uh, culinary innovation curriculum, you know very well that Oftentimes we're talking about innovation practice as a means of companies being able to be profitable. And we've had discussions about uh, De Bono's thought process, Doug Hall's Eureka mindset, and um, W. Edwards Deneming and his uh, Plan, Do, Study, Act processes to be able to innovate and consistently find opportunity for profitability within our companies. In the case of food product development, you've got to be able to consistently come up with new ideas and do a lot of creative problem solving to get those ideas from your head into the factory and onto the shelf in a way that's meaningful and unique to the consumer. So creative thinking is definitely a skill that you need to be cultivating and we're going to be very deliberate by using the food science lens as part of that. So I'm just going to jump right straight in and um, a long time ago, I did a workshop, and it was with Eureka Ranch and Doug Hall's um, mindset, and it was at a food conference. We use this specific example. Um, imagine you are an R&D specialist at a fish restaurant, and let's say the typical customers who are going to your fish restaurant are baby boomers. Well, one of the opportunities that you may be wanting to cultivate is how do you attract a more diverse customer base by improving the menu offering. Well, you could just fall into the same pattern and do menu analysis and say, well, do we have a sandwich? Do we have a grill plate? Do we have a pasta? Do we have fish and chips? And just make a robust menu offering that way. Well, it doesn't necessarily hone in on those demographic profiles and asking the question, what would a young woman who's not attending our restaurant, what would they want to be consuming? We could take this to the extreme and instead use uh, more provocation in terms of the lateral thinking process. De Bono liked to use the term PO, P -O, um, to create a provocative statement or a provocative objective to force people out of their existing mindsets to try and think in different ways. So we could be imagining ourselves as, I don't know, uh, Generation Z young women who are not attending this restaurant and try to cultivate a menu that would be more attractive to them. But what if we what if we completely just went out of character? Let's say we wanted to invite pirates and mermaids or mer people to our restaurant instead. Um, maybe we want to have submarine drivers. Why? I'm going with a nautical ocean faring theme here, but. Our aim is not to turn the restaurant into a children's wonderland, but just to think outside of the box, what would other people want to eat? And will that help us click in on ideas for what would be relevant, but exciting and engaging concepts that we maybe aren't thinking of when we're just thinking of doing 
good old menu analysis. So if I was a mermaid, what would I want to be eating? Maybe I'm not interested in eating fish because I'm ecologically conscious and I'm caring for the sea creatures that are around me. Or maybe I'm a pirate and I sail the sail the seas in search of adventure and I want to have all sorts of flavor experiences from the different countries that I'm going to find treasure in. This idea of stepping right outside of the normal persona or the normal mindset can help spark ideas and then those ideas can be run through various feasibility metrics at a later point but right now our aim is just to think completely divergent and come up with all sorts of ideas using provocative statements and in this case um, challenging the mind framework that we are working from by superimposing new people or new uh, customers allows us to think very creatively. So maybe our, our mermaid helps us generate the idea that maybe we should have a seaweed salad for vegans that is evoking that nautical ocean presence within our menu, but is vegan and is ecologically conscious. Maybe we develop more products with seaweed in mind because of the um, eco-focus and the uh, sustainability that's possible from that. And, or maybe maybe we've been so stuck in a very um, North American, Western Eurocentric uh, menu plating, and instead we look at global um, aspects of fish cuisine and find different fish stews or hot pots or um, different ways of presenting fish using a global lens, thinking like a pirate who sails the seven seas. We can use those different mind frames to create engagement and then link it back to our, uh, using our convergence, link it back to the actual demographics and the profiling of the, the opportunity or the, the demographic that we're trying to target. So going back to some more theory here, creative thinking strategy using lateral thinking Oftentimes we are doing that multiple idea facilitation or brainstorming where we're trying to generate as many different ideas as possible. Sometimes we're doing mental state shift and cognitive reframing or changing our perspectives so that we're able to think outside of our own biases and think like our customer or think like perhaps an imaginary scenario. We are by doing a combination of these two things, we are doing that lateral thinking or PO type thinking. There are some other different lateral thinking tactics, not just imagine yourself as a different character. Sometimes uh, to do lateral thinking, you can use a random entry idea generating tool. You could, um, I put up this photo of foodie dice. A student got me a set of these foodie dice a couple years ago, and it's a fun little game to play where all of the core ingredients that perhaps are available in your pantry show up on these dice and you roll those dice and look at all the um, randomized uh, combinations that are possible. And from there, you could be doing improvisation on that. On the other slide deck, we talked about the wall of cake day. We only had a certain number of ingredients, but the students were able to randomize those ingredients in as many different ways as possible. That was a, that was a ton of fun to do. Um, there are provocation idea generating tools um, where you can, uh, for example, I, I mentioned the mermaid and the pirate. Perhaps if you were doing that same exercise, you could step into the mind of a Viking or a Polynesian sailor or um, historical figures. Sometimes you will set these tools in place uh, movement techniques, taking the taking the product out of its normal context and putting it into a completely different environment sometimes will um, change how people experience it. Let's say, for example, um, you're working on that fish sandwich again. Normally, you'd be getting that fish sandwich in a uh, casual dining restaurant, but what would happen if you suddenly wanted to eat it in your office or you wanted to eat it in a park, would it change the experience of how you want to be eating that product? Right now, restaurants are asking that core question. They've often been developing their product concepts with their dining rooms or their, their package formats in mind. And right now, under the pandemic circumstances, 
restaurants especially are reformulating and having to do a lot of movement and so, uh, solution related techniques to take that product out of its context and put it into a completely different context. I group these um, into three subcategories because the top section is really about setting a completely different mindset and stepping outside of your normal expectations. In the case of the, the two, the why challenge or the disproving black hat mindset, um, these are very much about almost the debate behind an idea. So if we're going about that, that fish sandwich and you're putting mayonnaise on it, you may be saying, well, why do I have to put mayonnaise? Couldn't I put sriracha sauce on it? Or do I uh, have to have mayonnaise? Um, could I be putting peanut butter on there for all that it matters? Why am I putting it on there? And if I can really give a sound justification why I'm doing something, then it's likely got a sound purpose behind it. But uh, digging into that why, almost like we're doing Ishikawa analysis, if you can really strongly justify why you're doing something, then it's likely got soundness behind it. If you can't justify why it's there, then maybe you really need to go back to the drawing board. That same mindset of using black hat mindset, if you remember from our thinking hats, black hat was always about finding the negativity in something. You do want to go into that sort of exercise with a lot of facilitation to make sure that people aren't just out there going, ooh, this person hates my idea. But it, the idea behind a black hat mindset disproving activity is to identify any weak points in the concept so that all those weak points in in facilitation are identified and they are minimized or eliminated as fast as possible. Another one would be concept formation or fractionation. And, and, and this is quite interesting. Concept formation is where you would take that idea and blow it up into the whole system. And in fractionation, you would be taking the derivative parts and running each of those as a system. So let's say we're making that fish sandwich. Do we have a whole system for getting the bun, getting the fish, getting the sauce, getting the pickles, whatever is on that fish sandwich? And can we go through each of the whole concepts uh, to be able to execute that product? In the case of a project management or ideation, Oftentimes people will come up with really wonderful ideas, but they can't go uh, through that concept formation. And you need to go through it as a thought exercise to execute each of the individual points to make sure that there's um, a really well thought out methodology behind it. And fractionation, again, uh, taking each of the parts and making us a derivative. So you just focus on a minor aspect of it. Now, I mentioned Doug Hall. Um, Doug Hall at Eureka Ranch is a scholar of many of these same mindsets. Ed, uh, w. Edward Stemming and Edward de Bono are mentioned quite frequently in his work, and he's a more modern practitioner. Um, he uses a concept called the spark deck, and the idea being when doing lateral thinking, why not bring in something uh, that stimulates that mindset? And he actually publishes spark decks, uh, both with general interest in mind, but also he does customized spark decks for separate industries and these are almost like playing cards that you pull out you could um, riff off of the same concept by using cards or different food items or menus or products and then really encourage people to uh, think outside of the box when it comes to changing the patterns of use we actually did a spark deck type exercise a few years back where i brought in a whole bunch of different uh uh, actually, not just difference. It, I bought it in a whole bunch of boxes of shreddies. And shreddies, as you know, is produced at a Niagara Falls-based uh, manufacturing facility. And I said to the team, okay, imagine we are at post and we're working with shreddies, except that we're not working with shreddies. We're working at, with the dust in the bottom of the box. What can you do with shreddies either to give a completely different experience than eating breakfast cereal or can you use the dust in the box for a new application? And we had all sorts of different fun um, derivatives, shreddy cookies, uh, shreddy snack bars, shreddy um, party mix. Uh, that's an obvious one. Obvi it's already in existence. My favorite concept was actually taken in this photo. Someone took all the dust from the shreddies and converted it into 
ice cream cones, and they were delicious. Um, but the idea is we had the actual product in our hands and we were able to use it as a tactile process. And then with lateral thinking, come up with a wide variety of different concepts that then became ideation that uh, if we were working at post, for example, you could turn into a new concept. I think that's it for today. Oh, no. I love the why provocation where you go in and you dig and you ask why and you ask why and you ask why. And if you've been in any of my classes, you know I ask why a heck of a lot. Um, it's such a simple one, but to ask why over and over and over. Why are you using this ingredient? Why do you think that's the right customer base? Why do you think this is the right unit operation to be doing this? Why do you think you have <laughs> enough process validation on your product to have a safe product? I, I love asking the word why. So often I, I use this when I think of students. Um, honestly, creative thinking in product development is hard. And oftentimes I get students or I get clients coming and they say, I want a food product for everyone. And honestly, I've never met a food product that suits everyone. It's from Anna. <gasps> My my secret visitor sent uh, just came and sent something. Oh, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, long story short, really dig in and think about who is your product for, who is your consumer, why do they care about the product that, and and really dig in. And sorry about my interruption, but I got a very exciting uh, piece of mail and my teenage sidekick just brought it in and interrupted oftentimes hanging out with kids is one of the best ways of doing lateral thinking because they just come by it naturally they honestly just think outside of the box because they don't have those inhibitions and that's one of the reasons that I really enjoy working with young food scientists when doing product development is is that oftentimes they don't have all those preconceived biases about how things have to be done one of my favorite projects ever was working with Becky Griffin and when we worked with the Mothers Against Drunk Driving uh, Non-Alcoholic Beer Project. Becky was so much fun to work with because she came in and we were able to say, here are the existing ways of making non-alcoholic beer. Now let's challenge every assumption that's behind that and come up with a way that's feasible for any brewery to make non-alcoholic beer. And that's exactly what we did. And we were able to have a really successful early stage non-alcoholic beer. And many of the current market competitors use that beer as a jumping point for their product innovation. Exciting times. Um, again, think deliberately about how you do creative thinking. Because honestly, the more you practice and the more deliberate you are, the better you will become and the more fun you'll have while doing it. Always enjoy your questions. Take care and have fun.